In 2011, a team of Ocean X divers went to the Baltic Sea for yet another expedition. They planned to find valuable historical artifacts, or at least elite alcohol from long sunk ships, and didn't even know that they would stumble upon something much more important. When the treasure hunters turned on the sonar at a depth of 87 meters, they found a strange, quite large rounded object smooth edges, elements of ideal geometric shape, and right angles which nature could hardly create are clearly visible on the stone disc. The media started calling it the Millennium Falcon because its shape resembles a spaceship from Star Wars. So did divers find a sunken alien spaceship at the bottom of the Baltic Sea? Immediately upon returning from the expedition, the Ocean X team approached the artist Hauke Vogt. He was asked to draw a blurry image captured by sonar more clearly. To date, this illustration is considered the closest to reality. Looks exciting, even though the drawing doesn't convey how big the found object is. But if you compare its size with a human, you'll see that this thing is simply gigantic. The width of the stone disk reaches 61 meters, while the length goes up to 70 meters. It's like three tennis courts. Looking closely, the stone block seems to be decorated with elements resembling ramps and stairs. Some angles of the structure are right and clearly equal to 90 degrees. The object has surprisingly regular geometric shapes that couldn't be created by chance, right? But many scientists disagree with this. In their opinion, the picture of the anomaly found by the Ocean X team was of poor quality. Skeptics explain the resemblance to UFOs by the fact that in cases where we can't see a clear picture, the human imagination likes to draw something that doesn't exist and never has. Therefore, there's supposedly nothing to be surprised about, and there's no need to look for the presence of aliens in the waters of the Baltic Sea. Some even hinted that it was really advantageous for Ocean X to ask the artist to make an illustration of the find so that it looked like a flying saucer, because this way their story received more publicity. This pissed off the Ocean X employees because they didn't voice any assumptions regarding the origin of the anomaly but simply wanted to reliably show their find to the public, and doubting the quality of their technical equipment is merely stupid. Ocean X has at its disposal the 56-meter research vessel Ocean MV Aleutia, equipped with various professional cameras and even a helipad. It was they who first captured the giant sea squid, studied karst funnels, and also retrieved the wreckage of a passenger plane from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean called the Airbus A330, which crashed in 2009. The company team decided to show scientists that Ocean X employees are the same researchers who will do everything for the truth's sake. Therefore, a year later, they went to the Baltic Sea yet again. This time, the team was better equipped and took a more powerful sonar while the divers plunged to the very bottom right to the mysterious object. Diver Stefan Hogeborn was very surprised when he first touched the anomaly with his hand. After all, as soon as he cleared the silt, the surface turned out to be absolutely black, and to the touch it seemed artificial and smooth like concrete. The team took new pictures, divers broke off a small sample from the anomaly, and then found strangely scattered charred stones near it. A rock ledge split into two perfectly even parts and strange stripes on the seabed. If you look at all of this from above, the picture appears as if this colossal object fell into the sea, crashed into the bottom, and left traces of breaking behind it. Oceanex employees wanted to find at least something else to help them get closer to solving the mystery behind the Baltic anomaly and the new evidence. But according to them, within a radius of 200 meters around the stone disk, mysterious electrical interference suddenly began to disable the compasses, phones, and all the team's equipment. This ended their second expedition to the object. 
New images have allowed scientists to examine the right angles of the Baltic anomaly in detail, but they were still very skeptical. Archaeologist Goran Ekberg noted that the findings really look like the object was made either by humans or by a more advanced extraterrestrial civilization. Yet, he added that this wasn't the first object in the world that looked artificial but was actually made by nature. In 2018, during the Ice Bridge mission, NASA experts also stumbled upon something of a geometrically correct shape, which they called the perfectly rectangular iceberg. At first, everyone was also puzzled over how it could come out so evenly. But they quickly found a scientific explanation. This perfect iceberg breaks off like a nail that grows too long and cracks in a perfectly straight line. This means that the Baltic anomaly must also follow the laws of logic. Besides, in nature, we generally have a lot of examples of geometric perfection. For example, snowflake patterns, plant leaves, and salt crystals. Now take a look at this regular hexagonal grid pattern that scientists have called the Paleodictian. It was found on marine fossils around the world. Scientists still don't know what created such perfectly even honeycombs underwater. There are suggestions that it could be a small worm-like animal that can dig holes or something like a sea sponge that left an imprint of its body. 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci created a sketch terribly similar to the pattern found by scientists. The creature depicted next to it seems to give a hint that some kind of mollusk is associated with the honeycomb. Anyway, there are a lot of examples of how geometrically ideal objects can form at the bottom of the sea. Skeptics believe this shouldn't surprise the public and suggest that not everything perfect and inexplicable is necessarily the work of aliens' hands or tentacles or whatever it is they have. But what about all the other oddities of the Baltic anomaly? For example, the black stone chipped off from the object looks like it underwent high temperature treatment. There must also be some explanation for the mysterious traces of the fall. However, researchers from Stockholm University believe that the anomaly is a natural formation preserved since the Ice Age. According to their assumptions, a powerful glacier covered the territory of the Baltic Sea several thousand years ago. With the climate warming up, it began to melt. Clear lines turned out as the rock split, and accident-like traces at the bottom of the sea were in fact caused by the movement of the glacier. Having melted, the glacier laid the foundation for the formation of Baltic Sea, with unusual rock patterns at the bottom. The black rock sample turned out to be basalt, which is essentially ancient solidified magma. Therefore, the material looks like it was processed at high temperatures. That's all. This hypothesis' only drawback is that it doesn't explain why technology tends to go crazy in this area. You know, boulders are scattered all over the sea, yet strange malfunctions occur precisely near the Baltic anomaly. Since scientists can't explain all the oddities of the discovered mystery, even the craziest theories may turn out to be true. Those who believe that the Baltic anomaly is human-made have two hypotheses. According to the first one, the stone disk is still a flying saucer. The only difference is that it belonged not to extraterrestrial beings, but to the Third Reich. This version is actually based on a real historical fact. During the Second World War, the Nazis often conducted tests in the Baltic Sea. The anomaly may even turn out to be an entire Nazi bunker, which is impossible to get inside due to a well-thought-out defense system and a thick top-layer basalt. But if we succeeded, we would probably find the studies of various techniques aimed at disorienting enemy ships. Former Swedish naval officer and World War II expert Anders Atellis believes that the Baltic anomaly is indeed connected with the experiments of the Third Reich. However, it's not a base, but a platform base for a device. In fact, this is a bridgehead on the surface of which devices were placed to block the movement of British and Russian submarines in the area. And today, this weapon, disguised as an underwater block, disables divers' equipment. 
There's just one inconsistency here. Scientists have found silt in the cracks of the study fragment, which, as it turned out, is over 10,000 years old. This means that the Baltic anomaly was created long before the Second World War. But for this period, the second hypothesis is ideal. Its supporters believe that the Baltic anomaly is a fragment of structures made by the ancient civilization of Hyperborea. Like Atlantis, this city was lost many years ago. But according to a map of the Flemish geographer Gerardus Mercator, who lived in the 16th century, Hyperborea really existed approximately where the North Pole is now located. According to one of the most probable versions, the mainland disappeared after a giant asteroid fell to Earth about 11,000 years ago. Due to the fact that the impact occurred at an acute angle, Earth's axis deviated by as much as 15 degrees. This led to a giant tsunami. A colossal wave could have flooded Hyperborea and carried the fragments of its buildings towards the modern Baltic Sea. Still, there's a small gap in this smooth storyline. Atlantis and Hyperborea are considered mythical civilizations because their existence is confirmed only by references in ancient sources, which modern scientists don't really trust. Nonetheless, divers discovered another flooded city, the existence of which was proved, and it strongly resembles the Baltic anomaly. In 1985, Japanese diver Kihachiro Aratake sank to the bottom of the ocean off the small Japanese island of Yonaguni. Dropping only 5 meters, Kihachiro felt like he was in some kind of a parallel world. There was a real city around him with a castle, an arch, nearly five temples, a stadium-like building, a dance platform, a pool, as well as a rock in the shape of a turtle, and even a pyramid. These underwater ruins occupied an area that would fit three American football fields. Besides, in the nearest underwater caves, stalactites were found, which apparently sank along with this mysterious city. Scientists examined these mineral deposits to determine their age because this could shed light on the ruins age. Thus, it turned out that the city was built at least 5,000 years ago. But Teruaki Ishii, a professor of geology, believes this stone structure is even much older. He determined that the submergence of the so-called terraces of the structure occurred at the end of the last ice age, which means about 10,000 years ago. In this case, the age of the Yonaguni Pyramid, and indeed all of the structures of the city, is twice as old as the Egyptian pyramids. This Japanese Atlantis has much in common with the Baltic Anomaly because its structure also contains geometrically correct elements. Some protrusions of the Yonaguni design are cut in an absolutely right angle. It is suspicious that our distant ancestors could achieve such an effect without modern technology. And you won't believe it. But again, some skeptics began to argue that this construction, which looks like an ancient city, was also accidentally created by nature. As with the findings in the Baltic Sea, some scientists believe the perfectly right angles were created by normal tectonic movement. It was this interpretation that a mathematics professor Robert Schock was sure of before meeting Kimura, who was the first to find the ruins at the bottom of the sea. The diver had many pictures that proved otherwise. First of all, there's the fact that there are traces of processing and carving on the stone blocks. Secondly, on some of them, there's still undeciphered rock inscriptions. And most importantly, the clearly outlined silhouettes of the stairs of the Yonaguni Pyramid could hardly have appeared on their own. In addition, as it turned out, the rest of the structures were interconnected by roads and water channels. This indicates that human intelligence and good engineering knowledge were involved in creating such gigantic structures. So it's likely that our ancient ancestors were much smarter than we thought. Therefore, they could build such complexes as Yonaguni and the Baltic Anomaly, and natural disasters are to blame for the fact that they ended up at the bottom of the sea. At first glance, this option is the most plausible. But again, there's one crucial point. The study of a stone sample taken from the Baltic Anomaly showed that it might just have an extraterrestrial origin. 
Israeli geologist Steve Weiner claims that in addition to basalt, geothite and limonite were found in a sample of the stone from the Baltic anomaly, as well as metals that don't occur in nature and in all likelihood are of meteorite origin. The cosmic elements in the composition of the rock could have a powerful magnetic field, which would explain why diver's equipment always fails around it. But as it turned out, the strange things that Ocean X noticed during the expedition didn't stop there. For about a month after diving into the Baltic Sea, all members of the Ocean X crew experienced migraines and fevers. According to the researchers themselves, they felt like they were being warmed up in a giant microwave. On top of that, there's still no explanation as to why the researchers were ordered to stop their mission after only two dives. It seems like someone is trying to forcefully put an end to this story. The government also officially banned all divers from diving in that area. It looks like the authorities know something and want to hide it from the public. It's unlikely they would make such a fuss over a simple natural formation, right? Moreover, there have been rumors that aliens have been equipping their secret underwater bases for observing people for quite a while. For example, David Fravor, an ex-U.S. Navy fighter pilot, during a routine training flight over the Pacific Ocean in 2004, noticed a strange device in the air that hovered above the waves. It had a perfectly rounded shape and looked like a 12-meter long tic-tac. Fravor claims that having noticed his fighter jet, the object began to behave aggressively. It abruptly changed altitude, disappeared, and moved very erratically. But most importantly, that giant tic-tac blocked radar. That's how the Baltic anomaly acted with the equipment of divers. In that same Pacific Ocean, the crew of a Russian military submarine once noticed six unknown objects on the sonar moving at an incredible speed, over 425 kilometers per hour. And when the submarine urgently surfaced, the unknown objects incredibly quickly escaped from underwater and disappeared into the sky. It turns out that the underwater world is the most convenient place for a secret alien base because most of the ocean depths still remain unexplored. Even in the Baltic Sea, the anomaly isn't the first strange and unexplainable object associated with aliens. Not far from the probable alien base, there's the island of Gotland. Here, as many as 3,600 stones with various notches and even cuts were found. What's even stranger, scientists date them to around 3600 BC. As in the case of the Baltic Sea Anomaly, geologists still cannot explain their origin. But it's not even as important as the purpose of the drawings on the stones. Studies show that perfectly even cuts on them are not parallel, but oriented in several directions, as if pointing to something. Goran Heinrichsen, a doctor of astronomy, believes that the stones depict celestial objects. He suggested that some marks on the stones indicate the location of the moon, others show the sun, and the rest probably have something to do with the planets, stars, and constellations. The one who created this series of drawings has preserved information about full moon periods as well as the summer and winter solstices. In fact, these stones are astronomical calendars, and the island itself could be a huge observatory. It's unlikely that our ancestors needed to understand the night sky in such detail because in those days, they could only do elementary crafts and agriculture. But an extraterrestrial civilization, which had its own secret base nearby, could use the information about the location of celestial bodies. While supporters of various theories are screaming about UFOs, Nazis, and natural wonders, scientists have drawn attention to another feature of the Baltic anomaly. On one of the stones, divers found a distinct silhouette of a triangle with a hole in the center, which was carved into the surface. What if this is some important clue or symbol that will help us to understand the true origin of the stone disk? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments.